I've recently been experimenting with a strange new aircraft design. This is a Magnus Effect plane, and it's been a bit of a pain to get flying, to say the least. It's working! Oh my god! What is the Magnus Effect, though? The Magnus Effect acts on objects moving through the air. When a ball is spinning, a force perpendicular to the spinner axis can cause it to curve. This force is lift. Backspin creates an upwards force. Air is dragged around the top of a spinning object and deflected downwards. Following Newton's third law, this downwards force exerts an equal and opposite force on the wing. You can design an aircraft to take advantage of this lift effect. I thought this would be an easy and simple project to do while I'm working on larger things in the background, like my speedboat build and my rocket plane program. But it turned out to be quite the challenge. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this week's video. Before starting on the build, here's a little about today's sponsor. Surfshark is an app and browser add-on that allows you to basically place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world and browse the internet as if you're in that country. This lets you access and unblock content that you might not usually be able to see. It also adds an extra layer of security so that you can keep your photos, passwords, videos, everything else safe. For me, I can use Surfshark to protect and keep safe my top secret rocket plane designs, for instance. That's just one example I can think of off the top of my head. If you have files that you're working on, then you might also like that extra level or layer of security um, to keep your stuff safe. One key benefit of using Surfshark's VPN is that it protects you while you're using public Wi-Fi. If I were working on some cloud-based files in a cafe or something, I could be targeted by hackers. Surfshark is also the only VPN to offer one account for all of your devices. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this this video, you can use the promo code Project Air um, with the link in the description to get 83% off um, and three extra months for free, which is a, quite a quite a steal, I would say. Surfshark also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no problem with trying it out. And uh, yeah, you can just you know stop it if you don't like it. Okay, let's get on with uh, me showing you how I built this aircraft. I decided to build the craft with lightweight model rocket tubes for the rotors and thin carbon fibre tubes. My original idea was to keep the craft light and low powered. I wired up my electronics and started printing mounting plates, pulleys and other hardware needed for this build. Here is the rotor bearing being squeezed into a 3D printed part. Now unfortunately I'm having to do all of this stuff at home at the moment because I'm isolating but thankfully I've got an Ender 3 um, which is all set up ready to go and I've got my computer over here so what I've been doing is designing the parts on the computer, putting them on a little SD card, whipping them across to the Ender 3, printing them out on there and then assembling them on the floor down here which uh, is not ideal. <laughs> First run up of the rotors. I'm not sure if the motor's actually got that much torque so might have to put a gear in here. I think the ESC is trying to stop it running. Quite loud actually. I've turned it off completely now, it takes a while for it to spool down. Returning to my workshop, I completed the build through tidying up the electronics and adding a small stabiliser slash rudder to steer the aircraft. A big thanks to my Patreons listed here who helped me to make my videos. I programmed my transmitter to use a dial for spinning up the rotors while the throttle stick is used to control the main motor. I positioned the heavy battery at the bottom of the craft to lower the centre of gravity. Anyway, not to get too ahead of myself, first I needed to see if I could get any sort of lift from the rotors and go from there. Right, the first thing I'm going to be doing is uh, testing the aeroplane over this long grass which will cushion any inevitable uh, impacts. Oh wow! <laughs> Wow, it actually, it actually seemed to, to start taking off there. Uh, that's success, out of, off the bat. Wow, well, that's, that's pretty promising. Maybe I should just go for it. Let's do away with the safety net, hey? Now, one slightly annoying thing that needs improving is that this, uh, the, the belt here keeps slipping off the motor. So I'm going to have to 3D print a new, uh, a new pulley there for this uh, when I get back to the workshop. Right, I've got the drone up in the air over there. Let's see how well this flies. <laughs> Not very well at all, apparently. I broke one of the spindles that time. Right, let's have another go at that.
Oh, a bit closer that time. Unfortunately, this test flying was cut short by something on the aircraft braking, which would become an all too familiar theme over the next couple of weeks. Uh, something feels wrong with the motor. Oh, I think I might have messed that up. It seems something has gone awry with the, uh, the uh, rotor motor. So when I turn this on, that happens. <laughs> right, that was phase one of testing, some promising results. Now I'm going to go and fix some things and try again later. It's now a day later. I've re-engineered the belt system with a new motor here. Uh, that motor has got a lot more torque, so it'll have way more grunt to turn the spindles around. Right, all I need to do now is tidy up the wiring a bit and take it out again on another test flight. So let's see how that goes. Okay, the weather's pretty good. It's a little bit breezy, so we've just checked out the weather with the uh, with the Spitfire by taking it up really high, but it seems okay. So, so yes, time to have another go with the updated uh, Magnus Effect plane and see if it will actually fly. For some strange reason, I was quite optimistic at this point. However, backyard aerospace engineering with highly experimental aircraft is rarely easy, and I was soon to find out that one subtle change to accommodate the larger motor had introduced a rather fatal flaw into the design. <laughs> I'll try that again. <laughs> Hmm. As you can probably tell by that nervous laugh, I was quickly realising that this might not be as straightforward as planned. Something was not right at all here, and it seemed obvious the craft wasn't as stable as it had been a day before. Hmm. I did. I promise it was working better yesterday. At least the rotors seemed to be creating lift. Well, some of the time anyway. Because the Magnus effect was such an unknown concept, I wasn't sure about what speed the rotors should be moving at. Oh! <laughs> well, that worked a bit better. Power is the answer. After a few nosedives, it seemed more RPMs was a good thing for both motors. It was confusing, as sometimes with increased throttle, the aircraft remained stable, and other times it got into an unstable oscillation straight away. So my design had quite literally flopped, and several times. What had I done to make the aircraft so unstable? Well, to fit the larger motor to the airframe, I had shuffled the fuselage rod to the side, making the aircraft asymmetrical and the center of gravity slightly offset. I didn't think that this would be a problem, but being always inherently unbalanced, the plane would often find a fatal oscillation, which would be too great to be canceled out by the small vertical stabilizer. So next I entirely rebuilt the plane with the centre of gravity corrected, lining the rotor motor up on an angle while increasing the size of the stabiliser surface. The first go seemed to confirm that I'd fixed the wiggle issue. Now onto the small issue of getting the thing to go up. It seemed at this point the aircraft just needed some more power. Maybe I just needed to try a much larger motor and prop combo. To handle the extra current draw, I had to also upgrade to larger speed controllers. It was after these tests that I began to come up with another theory about why the plane was refusing to fly. Reviewing my previous test footage, I was beginning to suspect there was an enormous amount of drag being created by the rotors that I hadn't been accounting for. Raising the centre of thrust might lessen the pitching moment of the aircraft. More throttle would then result in more forward acceleration rather than rotation followed by a lowering airspeed and eventual stall. I reprinted the main motor mount and repositioned it to be slightly higher. Of course, the proof was in the flying so I headed back outside, hopeful but cautious. Something was sure to go wrong yet again. Yes, come on, come on. Oh. Very promising, but once more, big frustration. The fuselage had snapped in two and yet more work was needed to rebuild it. I was almost defeated and close to throwing in the towel altogether, but I had one final thought. What if I shortened the rotors to radically reduce the drag? This might allow the aircraft to fly faster and find that equilibrium that it badly needed to prevent it constantly riding the edge of a stall. This felt like quite a radical change and I had no idea whether it would work. It seems quite counterintuitive to be chopping your wings off in the pursuit of flight. So would this stubby, heavier version of my flying machine finally work? This is the last attempt because the weather is turning and I need to get this video out. And to be honest, I've built this thing far too many times already, or rebuilt, should I say. It's a completely different machine to the thing I built in the beginning of the video. It's got different booms, it's got different wings, uh, they're shortened. This is more like the sports version now. Two different motors, the rudder's different, there's a bigger battery. It's a lot heavier now, but it's got more power, better penetration into the, into the air. Let's hope that the uh, 
aviation gods are smiling on us today. <laughs> okay, one attempt, one attempt. It's gonna break straight away because it's gonna go so fast. You ready? I'm, ready? I'm not ready. Final go. Oh! Come on, go, 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 go. It's working. Oh my God. Look at that. It's actually bloody going. Thank God. It's wiggling around all, all over the place because of the wind. I'm going to try and get it back over here. Oh my God, look, it's actually going. I can't believe it. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. Keep watching it, keep watching it. It might fall out of the sky at any minute. Oh, I can't believe it. Look at that. Oh, I was thinking if we just get a 12 second flight, at least I can say it was longer than the Wright brothers' first flight. Oh, don't worry, that's just the timer. <laughs> It's not about to explode. Oh, I am so, so pleased and relieved. It's quite difficult to, to get it to go in the right direction, but we've got quite a headwind here, so it's sort of hovering around. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much battery this has got because it's running two motors. I'm gonna try and get it over here so we can do a low pass maybe. It's, it's getting blown further and further away. <laughs> Oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> we did it! We did it! I can't believe it! Oh, well, this video better get a thumbs up from you because, I mean, I've rebuilt this thing literally about five times and up until this point, it's just been disaster to disaster, so I can go and have a weekend now. Yeah, let's, let's go and see what the damage is. Might be able to fly it again, probably not. Oh, well. We're in two pieces. Oh, and that's broken. So we've broken the motor mount yet again. We've got a bit of a uh, bit of snappage going on and that's also broken. So yeah, <laughs> if you're going to make one of these yourself, make sure to print with plenty of uh, infill. Yeah, I'd probably recommend that you don't build one of these, but if you'd like to, then I'm going to be putting all of the STL files, all of that good stuff on my Patreon. Uh, not behind a paywall, don't worry, it's all on there for free. Um, but if you would like to uh, check out my Patreon and sign up, then you would be helping me to make all of these videos. Thank you very much to all of the people who, uh, who already support me and allow me to get equipment and things like this camera and the carbon fibre tubes and things like that for these videos. Um, yeah, it's, it, you're amazing. Thank you very much indeed. I'll also be writing a text document of some description to go over the, you know, in more depth the findings from my experiments to help you build a Magnus Effect aeroplane of your, your own. Before mentioning the next project, what that's going to be, I should quickly say again, uh, thank you very much to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. The next video will probably be an aircraft theme one, again, because I'm going to be taking advantage of the nice weather or relatively nice weather that we've got at the moment. In the meantime, I'll be posting update pictures and stuff like that on Instagram. Um, so yeah, make sure to like this video on your way out, subscribe, all that stuff. Boring, boring, boring. Um, yeah, and I'll see you on the next video. Um, bye for now.